you haven't already, share with your friends and family that it's still possible to watch the end of America's race. It's the 92nd running of the International Hill Climb here on Pikes Peak, brought to you by the Broadmoor. Well, right now we have an interesting competitor coming up, it's another unlimited division car. Uh, as I said earlier, these guys are running from fastest to slowest, but this particular individual, he didn't make a full run during qualifying, he ended up having a car problem. But this is a guy who's a three-time champion here in the open division, uh, so he's more than capable of putting down a real fast time. I don't know if it could be the fastest time of the day, but he could certainly put in a, a real low nine type number. I mean, he's, he's, wow. he's a real deal. Wow. He actually uh, owns a rally school and uh, is an instructor. And, uh, you know, he certainly knows how to drive. So we'll see what he can what he can do for us here today. Yeah, they're giving him a little bit more time uh, over the, the guy in front of him just so that he doesn't have to contend with trying to pass the pass a slower car. They, uh -huh. they know that he, he has the, op or the, the possibility of going much faster than his qualifying time. Cool. So, uh, or, uh, push down the yeah, he's, uh, pit road. Hopefully they'll give him enough time and hopefully he'll have a nice smooth run all the way up the hill. I know that he's had a few uh, a few troubling years here just with, you know, he's building his own car. He's one of those guys that he's out in, in the garage in the shop building this thing up. And uh, hopefully he can get to the top and finish this thing out. Yeah, actually, uh, I thought that we only had one, one women competitor, but we also have Rianne Korn who uh, is a, a past winner here. Uh, talked about her earlier. She came and rode uh, in the 750 motorcycle division in 2009 and 2010. And then she came back in 2011 and she won the all-wheel drive time attack class. Oh boy. So she's somebody that uh, you know I have a lot of respect for and, and somebody that will definitely be putting down a good time. And obviously if she's starting this far back, it's because she had a problem during qualifying. But she's also somebody just like Dave who's sitting in front of her, she knows this course. Mm -hmm. So if that car works, she'll work and she'll make a good time. So even though she didn't get a qualifying and even though she's at the back of the pack right now, she's still gonna be a contender in the uh, in the division that she's running in. We mentioned the Gas Monkey Garage car, uh, Aaron. Martin in there driving for uh, for you know excitement purposes. Plus, I tell you what, there's some commerce here. A lot of drivers will enjoy a career in racing. This may be their first attempt, but not the last. We see another lucky finisher up top. But uh, what what will make a racer make sure that they come back here? Is it a little bit of everything, or is it the just totally unique and and, and just profound nature of the course itself? Is it uh, the care and, and and the consideration given to the racer and team? Is it the organic nature of the course? Um, is it the challenging aspects that not only technology, but men and women themselves can improve year to year? I think what brings them back is success and failure. You have great <laughs> success here, you want to come back and duplicate it. Mm -hmm. You have failure here, you want to come back and redeem yourself. And wipe it and out. And everything in between is just a good time. So, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, that's why we're coming back each and every year. Uh -huh. so. I'll tell you what, uh, those of you are enjoying our broadcast we hope you can share a word or two about our broadcast and uh, it's not over yet folks i want to thank our staff here in the set too our production assistants vanessa anna and chase doing what they can to keep us uh pant loads in the chairs uh you know suffice it and stuff and a lot of care a lot of consideration being given here Gary Tracy, our race analyst, Don Sanborn, our hill climb historian, all here to give you the inside look and nuance of America's favorite hill climb, the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, brought to you by the beautiful Broadmoor. It's Sunday, it's race day. Uh, Valley Butte, uh, of course, we are gonna see, a, as Gary mentioned, a little bit of an extra staging time at the start line to allow any passable vehicle to clear the track. Diesel cars showing up. Oh, I'm sorry, this is in our electric class. This is unlimited. Yeah, seems to be cruising fine. Again, that, that surprise that you mentioned when one of these electric supercars takes off right next to you, no notice whatsoever. Yeah, it's There's just no it's key just, grinding. Yeah, it just <laughs> goes. Yeah. 
It's no, all go. It's quiet. No squeaky yeah. door. Yeah. <laughs> like the 68 Squire wagon. Uh -huh. And, you know. So. My brother says it's absolutely the most ridiculously fast thing that he's ever drove. And my brother, he's had a lot of experience in a lot of different cars. He's you guys have felt Indy the cars and, you know, he's, he's sort of run a bunch of different stuff. So mm -hmm. to be able to say that, I think that uh, Mitsubishi has really done its homework and they've had a chance to uh, to to look at the car, re-engineer it, or change it over the past few years, and I think that they came here with a really good package, um, and I think that they have more opportunity to even go faster than what we saw today. I think that the course conditions limited them a little bit today. I think it was a little bit slippery. Mm -hmm. uh, hearing back from my brother, he ran a 908. Uh, he went off track in the, one of the sections was able to come back on and he still did that 908 time so he thinks that somewhere, three seconds. He, somewhere he could have picked up that three seconds right. and uh, maybe got the overall so but I think the electric division each and every year from here on out will be fighting for the overall king of the mountain time and uh, hopefully Mitsubishi continues to come back and my brother gets to be a part of that program and mm -hmm. uh, he is really a good fit for uh, you know for for what they have going on here and He's certainly a fan favorite, and he puts in his time to uh, to not only he really wants to go out of his way to promote the companies that, that he's working with, and I think he uh, he does that very well. That's a performer's favorite food. That's right. Perfection. Perfection. Yes. I just can't wait to see uh, Dave get in this car right here mm -hmm. and, and head on up the mountain. Another uh, respectable time to be seen here for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you mentioned it earlier, but uh, you know, Honda's here is a, in a big way, you know, with uh, multiple motorcycles and cars. So uh, that's a big team. A lot Absolutely. Of our, excuse me. A lot of our audience at home is uh, we're understanding they're chiming in about some different questions about the the limits to electric powered cars. Is it you? You spoke of an incredible breakthrough about in, uh, handling the weight of the cells themselves. But if you right. move to a more aerodynamic chassis and, and or body. Shell, I mean, where can it go from here? And for our newer viewers and to find out a little more about the electric car concept. Yeah, I think that, you know, right now, the real challenge on the electric side is the weight. And uh, I don't see that, that that will be changing all that much. It might be coming down, you know, maybe, maybe you know, 20, 50 pounds, 100 pounds at right. a time. But you're not going to see Mitsubishi come back next year with a car that weighs 1,900 pounds. No. They're going to come back with a car that will be better than what it was this year, but that's the, mm -hmm. the battery technology, how much difference it's made. I know you were talking about that instant acceleration right. with the battery, instant Video. power, power instant, out instant power generation mm -hmm. from the battery. Um, you know, that's, that's something that they've made significant strides in, but the actual weight of the batteries is still, a battery is a battery, and right. they're doing things to try yeah. to make it better, but it's not perfected yet. Yeah. Right, and then, how about internationally? I mean, they've also got access to the technology, maybe not being applied in the racing industry as much as the United States, or where do you see that happening? Yeah, I think that on the on the car, the electric car side, uh -huh. I think that what we're seeing here is the best of the best. Um, yeah. I don't think that there's anything, if, if, in if the they're world. in the world, that yeah. would outdo what we've seen here right. today. And, you know, maybe there's somebody out there developing something that mm -hmm. might surprise us, mm -hmm. but uh, these guys have been working really hard, and I think that, you know, for somebody like Monster Tajima to come here and abandon the tried and true, mm -hmm. you know, standard motor yep. to go for an electric motor, he had a lot of uh, faith Intuition, in it. right. A lot of faith, and, you know, he just went for it. And, you know, it proved last year to be a, a winning experience for him. This year, he's on the podium. I mean, he's uh, he's definitely uh, putting in some some good time. So, right. you know, it's, it's it's fun to see that electric division uh, challenge for the overall time here. It's amazing how far it's come, really. You know, mm -hmm. when you look back at uh, so the early early electric and the, let's say just in the early '90s or something, where they were doing, you know, 25 or 30 minutes or something to work them out. You know, right. running out of power before they got to the top, or you know. <laughs> But yeah. now, man, it's, it's really improved. Well, electricity and its application has shown its functionality. Um, let's look into another source. What about, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about natural gas? Yes. Yeah, natural gas. That might be 
something that we see here on the hill climb? I mean, we've seen propane. We saw so, propane. Yeah. yeah, we have had natural gas up here. And yeah. of course, a lot of the public transportation, you know, modes are switching over to the clean natural gas, the CNG vehicles, all on the West Coast, um, and certainly the East Coast. Portland is adopting an, an NCG public transport system, but uh, I just wondered what racing might hold for it. There's a little bit more volatility to that particular type of fuel, is it not? More than gasoline itself, or... I'm not an expert, more although my, my wife might normal. disagree with this statement, but I'm not an uh, expert in gas. <laughs> so, um, with that said, I don't know as far as natural gas versus propane, yeah. but... Right. Uh, you have technician status. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh -huh. technician status. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, obviously, if they can make it to go into uh, normal vehicles mm -hmm. that we're driving on the road, there are safety standards there that they might be able to bring to the next level. And that's what really this type of racing is all about is being able to test it here, see what it can do, and then apply it to real world automotive. And that's right. why Mitsubishi is here right. and other manufacturers. They're here to test that electric development and see where it goes, see what they can do with it here. And pretty soon we'll see that on our cars that are sitting in our garage. That's well said. Yeah. There is not, not a lot of flat space on this track, and I guess that was the bigger demand, the bigger That's request right, yeah. for performance from the vehicles, yep. and thus the driver. We just can't leave the drivers out. We're watching live coverage of race day, June 29th, 2014. This is the Broadmoor Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, and you're in living color around the globe. So we watch uh, one of the vehicles being taken off the track. There's the medical assistance there to check on the driver, but an eventful day so far. It's coming to you live on Emerging Sports TV. I'm Crazy John Brooks, your host. Proud to be on America's Mountain today for the biggest day in motor racing history. As far as hill climbing goes, this is the mother load. Alongside Gary Tracy, longtime competitor and our race analyst today, providing us with exceptional color and perspective as no other could. Uh, coming down off the mountain is, uh, you know, as an accomplishment itself, but you speak of the task of getting to the top. And uh, having done, Don Sanborn here as our historian has just added a special level of, uh, I believe, information for our viewing audience and for myself. I'll tell you, I learned a lot more than I knew uh, about, uh, even with the history, but I think our fans at home might be interested in coming out to see the race. How easy is that next year, Don, for our fans at home to consider coming out to Coming well, out to Pikes Peak. That's as easy as going to our website, tpihc.com, mm -hmm. okay. and ordering tickets. Uh, I doubt that they're available now, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it, when it gets uh, close to race time next year, or maybe even you know next winter, start thinking about it. And, Make uh, that the first consideration. Yeah, check, there All you right. And New Year's a resolution. Uh, get on tpihc.com and buy some tickets and come on out. And one, can, one of the things I want to express right now is that in years past we didn't have a race date for the following year when we were racing today. And now what we've done is we have the race date for I believe the next five years set in stone. Yeah. So people can start planning. If they can't make it next year, maybe they can make it the year after. Awesome so idea. it's cool to uh, have those race dates set in place. They're already set in stone. Uh -huh. We know we're gonna be back next uh, you know, June and, and we know what weekend. So that is awesome. um, definitely put it on your calendars and we hope to see you guys here. Uh, and one of the things that I want to say about it too is how difficult it is or how easy it is. Yeah, obviously buying a ticket and getting here, uh, that's, that's part of it. But it truly is a, a great experience um, to come out and check this stuff out. I was here on a practice day and a dad was here with his two boys and they were just so excited they couldn't be here this weekend because it was their uh, it was actually his parents' 50th wedding anniversary, so they couldn't be here on the Saturday, but he came out during the week and he was really disappointed that he wasn't going to be here during the, the weekend because it's like a family tradition. They come out, everybody's here, they barbecue, they have the ice chest and uh, get to watch a bunch of good racing and get to see all these cool cars and motorcycles and stuff like that. And it's a real experience. And, even waking up early and getting up here, it's part of the experience and you get to see the sun come up and yeah, it's just a great like deal. watching the sun come up, up, up from the top of Pikes Peak. Oh yeah. yeah, those guys that are sitting up at 16 Mile, I think it's just as cool to see the sun come up as it is to, uh, you know, see the race cars come up and yeah. you're looking down on the city and when you're up at, you know, up at 16 Mile, you're basically up about 12,700 feet and you're looking down on a city 
down below and you just can't believe how high it is, how right. high you're up in the air. Now our viewers at home are watching some of the safety precautions and extraction being done here at this very tricky turn. I believe it could still be the diesel vehicle that has not made it to a, but it just now made it to a safe extraction point. Uh, but again, we want to hats off to the PPIHC staff with the emergency response personnel, uh, these, the Ford F-150s out there and their full adornment uh, with the Broadmoor PPIHC logo there out, out there to help protect, save, preserve, and then make way for the next racer. So quite a process, but this is a very serious business that you're watching now. Hope everybody's okay. Um, I'm sure you've seen a number of conditions that have had their effect on the racers and the race course itself, but uh, today I'd say our, our competitors have had a fairly enjoyable opportunity to race their best race. Well, it's, uh, you know, you gotta hand it to these guys in the tow trucks too. Um, I believe these are, these are guys from Randy's Towing and they get in there and they get it done. They gotta figure out how to get these cars out of the trees if they go into the trees. Um, a lot of times they're going down embankments. When uh, Mike Ryan went off during practice, he actually went airborne and jumped over trees. So he was on the opposite side of the trees. There was no way to get this big semi truck out except to bring in a big crane, lift it up and over the trees and back onto the road. I mean, these guys really know what they're doing and uh, you gotta, you gotta put your hands together for them because uh, you know they're sitting here all day and they're looking out for the competitor's safety and making sure that if something goes off the road, they can uh, get them back on the road and recover you know, whatever's left of the car. Yeah, that, that Mike Ryan story reminds me of uh, uh, back, back when uh, Bobby Unser Jr. was driving. He went off at Blue Sky, just below 11 mile. And, uh, was he seeing Blue Sky he when was, he went off? Yeah, <laughs> he was, yeah. <laughs> That's not good. And he landed on the rocks down there, you know, and of course, if you tried to pull the car back across the rocks, you tear it up worse than it already was, you know. Right. So, so Bobby uh, Sr., being who he was, you know, he called up some friend that was a general at Fort Carson and, and got, got them to, to provide a Chinook helicopter, and they came up and and lifted the car up off the rocks and put it back on the road so they could tow it back down. And wow. It. Yeah, absolutely. You know, these guys are... Friends in high places. That's that right, how that yeah. goes? These guys are trying to get back on track. Um, hey. I remember Monster Tajima going off, uh, trying to think what corner it was. It was below Glen Cove, I want to say somewhere right around 11 mile. Uh, he had gone off the road, went through a bunch of trees, they lifted the car back out, mm -hmm. came back, worked night and day mm. to try to get that car put back together. And you got to remember, they're coming from Japan, they're flying the car over. How much stuff can you really bring, right? But they were able to, you know, with probably a lot of help from people in Colorado Springs, they were able to put that car back together. And uh, he was on the track on race day, you know, wow. just a few short days later. A lot of times, uh, competitors actually help one another. I mean, if they, you know, if you have a part you can't find or something, uh, uh, often uh, some another competitor might have that part and, uh, and provide it or whatever. There, it's uh, you know, as kind of as a hill climb family or whatever. People Absolutely. help each other and uh, um, you know they all want to see each other. They kind of want to keep the competition alive and make sure everybody yeah. gets a chance to, to uh, compete. Well, I told you that story earlier about uh, Jeff Grace. He's one of those guys that he's a fierce competitor, but at the sa same time, he uh, works down at the motorcycle shop down here, and he's helped me out numerous times. I had uh, seals that were blowing that I couldn't find anywhere else, and he helped me make, you know, put two seals together to make a seal work. And, How cool! You know, it was the hold the oil in the bike, and How you know, cool. he, like went out of his way to make that happen. You know, so yeah. and that happens every day. You know, it's just one of those deals mm -hmm. that. Uh, with the guys here at Pikes Peak, everybody's everybody's here. It's a, it's a, it's truly is a family. Yeah, yeah. Well, we see some more activity with the uh, rescue truck coming down into its next stage of deployment here to extract one of the race cars. And we've got a medevac truck there. Just checking on the status of the driver. I'm sure. Boy, I tell you, after seeing the semi come back down off the top uh, a couple of days ago, a lot. To, I mean, the potential for injury is just it's through the ceiling. It really puts technology in a, in a very admirable place to say that we have uh, 
still protected all the drivers thus far with some activities. No, no real boom boom, but that's a separate miracle in itself. You know, that's yeah, a technology a, that hopefully will never reach the top. There's definitely a risk that these guys are taking, but you know, when you look at something like uh, Jeremy Foley crashing off uh, off the side of the hill and tumbling down, I can't remember how many times that oh. car flipped, but those guys got out of the car. You know, and, yep. and as dangerous as this thing is, the people that are racing here and the tech, tech inspection that they go through to make sure that the bars that they're using for all their roll cages are the proper thickness, that they meet the standards that need to be met to be here at the Broadmoor Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, that's what tech inspection's all about, is to make sure that if something like that happens and somebody goes off course, they have the roll cage to protect themselves. Yeah. And uh, not every racing organization is like that. Uh, they yeah. don't check it the way that these guys do. Even Monster Tajima, he came here uh, last year with his new car, and uh, Tech Inspection looked at the car, and they made him add a, a bar uh, up above on his head. They wanted a little bit more clearance above his helmet. Cool. And they wouldn't pass Tech Inspection until that was done. So, you know, that's the kind of Tech Inspection that we have here at the, the Broadmoor Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. And yeah. you know what the risk of loss is on that issue. <laughs> well, yeah. Jeremy a racer. Foley. Yeah. Jer Jeremy Foley claims that uh, that you know the tech inspection probably saved his life because he had they asked him to fix some things. Bingo. And, uh, he did it and, uh, and of course lived to walk away from that crash. Absolutely. Watching. I don't know. You know, if, if most likely if you're a fan and you're you're here on our uh, webcast right now, you probably saw that, so you know what we're talking about. But literally, the footage of that was seen all over the world. Good Morning America, multiple, you know, YouTubes, and uh, he was on every nighttime show, David Letterman, and all that kind of stuff. It was, it was quite the ride that not only he took down the side of the mountain, but yeah. right after he took a little ride around <laughs> and all these different, yeah. uh, you know, he's thrown into the spotlight pretty uh, fast. Uh -huh. You know, that's a great way to make the front page not. <laughs> we see more um, activity here as we have the car loaded on the tow truck and it does appear to be disabled uh, quite clearly. Hope everybody's all right. Looks like it could have taken some impact on the front right. And hopefully not though. Hopefully they'll just, they're just going to move off the road there. And I guess we'll have, to, we'll have to wait for the ambulance to come on down before they'll clear the road again. For, you know, so they'll go to a safe area and adjourn that run, and then pretty soon we should hear another vroom vroom. Yeah, we'll be back up and going again. Yeah, I'm not one sure if they were shortly. bringing any cars down or not, you know? Great example like of the like shot here, folks, from 16 to but see. But the ambulance has got to come down, unless he's just moving to another uh, a position somewhere else on the mount. Just around on the left there is another uh, standby point, if you will. Well, definitely a good sign that uh, he doesn't seem like he's in too big of a hurry there. So I'm sure the driver's just fine, just uh, getting checked out to uh, you know make sure that he's okay. Yeah, I, I, earlier we were talking about uh, riders, you know, breaking bones and things and continuing. Uh, uh, there's a story. Uh, oh shoot! Now he lost his name. But we had it. We had it. There's a real famous picture of a uh, driver going off at 16 mile, and they they took him down to the hospital, checked him out. Was, this was back in like the 50s or something. So they took X-rays of him, but they let him out of the hospital, and and then they started looking, finally, you know, got the X-rays back, looked at him, realized he'd broken his back. And uh, so they had to go find him in, in Manitou, in a bar in Manitou, and have him come back to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I've broken a lot of bones. I've had over 20 broken bone surgeries in my life. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's never a good thing when you break a bone. Yeah. But I've, I've actually had times where I've broken bones, and I didn't think I broke a bone. And then I've had times where, you know, I was for sure this is broke, and I go, and they're like, oh, no, it's just bruised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it was Slim Roberts. The name came back to me, Slim but uh, yeah, Slim Roberts. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> These guys, you know, it's, they're just going for it. They're letting it hang out at Pikes Peak, and with that said, 
two tires are going to go off, sometimes four. Yeah, it's yeah. Happen. So right now you see uh, the, the, the uh, ski area. It's way back down. We got the Ducati uh, pool setup that they have there with the semi truck and the Ducati tents. I'm sure those people are enjoying themselves with some good refreshments. So it goes back again, you know, we have one of these another uh, red flag scenarios and Dave's been sitting in the car now for probably a good 25, 30 minutes. He's ready, man. He's already gone through this whole mountain several times in his head. And, uh, you know, he's he's ready to. Ready to, yeah, ready get to ready go. to get yeah. driving. Looks like they're they're sending, a, I guess, another ambulance up to take the position that the, the one going down has vacated. So. Uh, so they'll have one pre-positioned and ready for in case something else happens. Right. Well. And hopefully nothing else will. Yeah, we have quite a few cars left. And again, you know, the cars that are left right now are all, all cars that had problems during qualifying. So I think we're uh, in store for some some fast times here out of the last, you know, four or five cars that uh, weren't able to uh, make qualifying runs. Yeah. Well, it looks like they're clear off the track there. Hopefully, they're, uh, you can actually see the skid marks of where he went off. That corner is one of those corners that... Uh, I guess you wonder where I've been I search to find the love within I came back to let you know There's a new beauty in town. The 2014 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. Lease an Outlander Sport now for $179 a month. Somewhere beyond five stars and five diamonds lies a place you've never been before. A place where the mountains are closer and the sky goes on forever. A place where the past shines like new and the old rules just don't apply. Welcome to the Broadmoor in Colorado. More than a resort, it is the new gateway to the American West. Discover it now at broadmoor.com. Be one with it, and it will be one with you. Be one with your tires, and the road will be one with you. And good tires. We all have someone we love counting on us to arrive. So why count on anything less? The 2014 Mitsubishi Outlander. Named one of America's safest CUVs. Lease a 2014 Mitsubishi Outlander for $209 a month for 36 months.
can't go drive around Daytona. You can't go drive around the local bull ring. It, but you can go drive Pikes Peak anytime you want to spend four bucks. Well, I think it's more like a family affair. I mean, everybody, a lot of them originally were buddies, and uh, there wasn't too much hassling, and it was a great thing to do. It was like a picnic. After the race, you could go in the park and have a sandwich and drink some pop, and it, it was exciting. It's a special event. Uh, you know, we'd, all, we'd race the uh, Indy cars and off-road and all kinds of different kinds of vehicles and on different kinds of tracks, and uh, this one always is a, is a, was a real special event to me because it's once a year you get one shot at it. I speak to me. It's just the most fantastic thing there is. Pike's Peak is still the number one thing in my life. Pike's Peak is a total different place than any other place that, that you ever did around. The tradition, I think that the, the tremendous tradition and all the old unsers, the Uncle Louis and, you know, I mean, the guys that really made that hill. I, I felt that uh, I really accomplished something when, uh, when I won that event even though you know, it only lasted about 11 or 12 minutes. But uh, it was, uh, it was uh, something different, totally different, but uh, very, very special to me. Get up there and racing, you've got people lining the course, you know, standing up and down both sides. So you've got a, a human fence line. When I start getting up into the Ws, where you really got to pitch the car to get it into the corner, approaching like a left-hand switchback, you know, you kind of toss the car to the right first and point it like over the edge. And then you've got all these people lined up here. And you see their eyes start getting big. And then you swing the thing back around. You're watching a hairpin, and out of the corner of your eye, you see people bailing off you know, over the side to get out of the way. <laughs> and that always used to amaze me. Every time I've ever won the thing, you get to the top, and uh, as soon as you cross the finish line, all you're thinking about is, damn, I could have. There was five of those turns I could have got better. Next year, I'll get it better. That's what always takes you back. It was a vacation. We'd work like crazy on our cars during the day while the, while the wives and the kids spliced around the pool. And then we'd get up at 3 o'clock in the morning or 4 o'clock in the morning, go up on the hill and get dirty and come back down and start all over again. But it was a lot of fun. It was great. If you needed parts and pieces, you'd go to your competitor and borrow something from him. Uh, I would prefer to race in the Pikes Peak Hill Climb a lot more times than I would rather race on the on the half mile or mile dirt. You don't have anybody to judge off of or, or set your pace off of or knowing where to shut off or where to get on it or whether your turn speed is high or low or whether you're going to bust it loose. Don't know that. When you run by yourself, it's a whole lot harder. And that's Pike's Peak. I mean, when I, when I go up that, that mountain all by myself, I got I to gotta imagine my head, that clock just keeps going taking talk all the time. So, like I always tell Robbie, got to keep moving forward, concentrate. I'm, I'm just concentrate. How fast can you go forward? It's you and your race car versus the mountain and the weather and all, all the other things, you know. If you fall off the road, nobody else's fault but your own. Oh, God, it really comes oh so close with a great effort. is our medical response team escorting back through the pit row, taking care of our riders and racers. Queued up, next to go, number 959, Dave Garapetian. And he's off and away. Number 959 takes on America's Mountain. That pure, clean, fresh smell of High temperature gasoline right here on race day. Look at the following of all the divisions, all racers have a plethora of fans. 968 queuing up into the lane. 968 approaching the starting line. 
Carapetian just taking to the course, uh, 959 out of Austin, Texas, and in queue. Brian Korn, as Gary said, at under one of our lady competitors. Yeah, she'll be uh, taking off here momentarily if she hasn't done so already. But obviously, you heard Dave take off. And he sounded like uh, he was definitely uh, ready to take on the hill climb here. Another hats off to Mother Nature for providing this luxurious theater for motorsports and for our fans and racers alike from all over the country and outside of the United States. It's a good time. It's the best time in hill climb motorsports. The Broadmoor, Pikes Peak, International Hill Climb, our focus of today's live broadcast here at Emerging Sports TV. I'm Crazy John Brooks, your proud host, alongside Gary Tracy. And, of course, a many-time competitor here, a member of the Tracy Racing family as well. And records could be broken today, Gary. That's for sure. I think that, uh, you know, what we've seen all day is a, a, a track that uh, obviously was dry all day. So that, that's a good thing. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things that sometimes it tracks there and sometimes it's not. But today I think that it's sort of been a balance uh, in between. I think that we've seen certain parts of the day where the track was just too hot and it sort of turned into a little bit too greasy of a situation. And then we've seen now where the track temperatures come down. I think it's an ideal time right now, just uh, with the afternoon uh the afternoon setting in here and the temperatures uh, coming down a little bit. So we have Brianne Bri Korn taking off. Looks like she uh, took off in a 968 car. Yeah, she's running the time tack uh, class. She's, uh, you know, definitely uh, somebody to look out for. I mean, I'm telling you, this girl, she's, she's practicing all the time. She has a, a ranch at her home that she can go out and do some rally sport stuff at. But, uh, You'll keep on seeing her name pop up because she's quite the driver and and uh, somebody that can definitely uh, come out with a win today. Like I said, you know, she she didn't have the opportunity during qualifying to put down a good time, but it might happen right here during the race. Dave Kern, number one five six, moving into position here to get the green flag, and we're nearing the close of our car program. And what a day it's been! Yeah, it sure has. I'm, I'm telling you, I think these guys uh, were really blessed today with a good day. <laughs> I mean, I always get so worried about those afternoon showers coming in that you know it looks like we're gonna we're gonna squeak one in. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll uh, of course didn't invite any weathermen here, as you'll see. You won't see any weather vests of any type here. Just people looking up to the drivers and the stars of the show, the machines and the men behind the action. Well, I don't and, think uh, today that too many people were worrying about that, but under normal situations, right. the teams are like, they know what's going on with the weather. Right. And Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, uh, the Broadmoor Hill Climb here, they basically have a guy that's looking after the weather through the duration of the race. So in years past, we've known when it's gonna start raining. We've seen it come in, you, you, you're sort of preparing for it, but uh, the top teams, they're looking on their computers, they're looking at how the radar looks, and I remember last year with my brother, the team manager there, we're sitting inside the uh, motorhome with the computer out, and we're doing constant updates to see what's going on with the weather pattern. But, uh, you know, that's what it's all about, so get here and get up the hill. We see a lot of uh, the crowd gathering, of course, for the Watanabe uh, sidecar and approaching and with Dozeki in tow. And uh, of course, from Japan, they've got a lot of expectations for their finish here this weekend. But we're still in our car program today. And as Gary's mentioned, Breon Korn on the course right now. And just about uh, four drivers left. Up next will be Shaw Dikosovic. And from Vancouver, British Columbia, driving the 7-9 car. It's an exciting day in racing history, of course, and you're there through the miracles of the interweb. You're watching Emerging Sports TV and our live coverage of the 2014 Broadmoor Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. I'm Crazy John Brooks, your proud host, alongside Gary Tracy and Don. And uh, 
and the uh, Don Sanborn, our historian, has provided us with a few inside looks. Uh, again, as we see some of our sidecar pilots and uh, co-pilots checking out some of the cars, we've got motorcycle right next to our final car of the day, the 86 car, and it's uh, Ken Gushy out of Irvine, California. They'll be the final event in our car program. Some of our Rangers, Colorado Rangers, coming back from a uh, looks like a tip off with some gasoline. And uh, a lot of activity around the scoring table as well as North Country has this up to the moment results that people can check. And uh, tell you what, we've heard quite a bit of hoopla during the day as people discover their best times or possibly otherwise. But uh, again, thanks to Mother Nature and the PPIHC staff and board, and of course our chairman of the board, Tom Osborne, for this year's presentation. So it looks like uh, Ken Gushi, who's going to be the last car that's uh, going to be running up the hill. You know, this guy is is one of the top drifting guys in the United States, if not the world. Mm -hmm. um, he also won the exhibition class in 2013, and. Uh, you know, he's been around, he's been doing this for a long time. I guess he was actually the youngest competitor to do the D1 Grand Prix of Japan and also do, doing the Formula Drift Championship. So he's a true ambassador of the sport of drifting. And wow. uh, I think that we'll see a real good run out of him today. I'm not sure what happened during qualifying, but obviously something happened during qualifying for right. him to be at the, uh, the back of the field here. So, you know, it's sort of neat that we got to see all the fast cars up at the front mm -hmm. at the start of the day mm -hmm. and then we got to see a wide range of cars throughout the day but at the end of the day here we get to see some fast competition again so I'm not sure how Dave's looking going up the hill in the uh, unlimited car mm -hmm. but I'm sure he's you know definitely uh, putting down some good times never over till it's over our cameras up at the 16 mile market bringing you these images and of course our exciting finish line cameras there to capture the checkered flag as our racers are given credit to completing the task. All the way up America's Mountain, the Race of the Clouds, dubbed many years ago the Broadmoor Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, a complete success thus far. I want to thank again some of our supporting sponsors, of course the Mitsubishi Motor Company and Hankook tires the TCI tire centers and also locally and nationally discount tire uh, we can't say enough about the city of Colorado Springs for hosting and of course the huge flux of personnel and uh, vehicles and the, the uh, flux on Denver International Airport Colorado Springs Airport things just seem to be laid in place so everyone can come enjoy this exciting racing day and motorsports history a beautiful sprawling look at the the mountain, the layout, the diversity of the track, and this fact that there's no two turns alike out of the 156. They just seem alike. <laughs> you can get dizzy and, and without even moving, it seems. The demand on our drivers as well as the machines. And um, a beautiful day for racing. Big Star Summit camera operators. I'm not sure if that, I think this is Brianne Corn that was was coming up the hill here. She's going to be going into the uh, third leg of the switchbacks there, and uh, we'll be seeing her car coming into play here in a moment. Yeah, it was it was looking threatening on the top, but it actually looks like the clouds are moving off a bit, so we may dodge it, dodge the weather here. Yeah. I hope so. Brianne. I don't want to be standing in the rain, that's for sure. <laughs> well, Mother Nature's got to do her job, too. And there's another beautiful angle of atop the Pikes Peak. This coming from the 16-mile marker. The beautiful, sprawling views our fans are able to enjoy. So this corner right here is the one that we talked about fully going off and going down you can only imagine going off the edge of that track right there oh boy there's big drop-offs all over this place and uh, want to keep all four wheels on the on the pavement that's for sure yeah, yeah when Bo Bobby Regester went off there and he he uh, you know rolled down the hill got out of his car and uh, did a bow to the crowd <laughs> yeah you know I mean who would have ever known 
We can see some big snow banks in the backdrop that are caught up in the topography here on Pikes Peak. It's a regular scene, even though the month of June, our international viewers are going, hey, I thought it was hot and sunny there, but we see the huge banks of ice, and of course, some of that is the snow and ice combination that drifts, and that's a hard, hard material that's there on the yeah. uh, race side. But and another can stay uh, there almost all year long. Example, yeah. right, of the elevation yeah. and, and the elements that are present and uh, before you even get to the top. And yeah. now the action here at the starting line awaiting some of our final competitors here in our car program. Number 86 will be our final four-wheel vehicle to take on America's Mountain. And right now, I want to thank our viewers again around the globe. Don? Talking about that snowbank, uh, in the first, the, the first race, 1916, uh, Charlie Tutt, who was real instrumental in getting our museum going, he, uh, he tells a story about his grandfather was at the very first race. And uh, he's, uh, apparently Spencer Penrose hired a big name driver to come race in the hill climb to kind of put it on the map, you know. And his name was Barney Oldfield. And so uh, he, was, he wasn't he was doing real well. He was going kind of slow and he, he stalled at 16 mile and, and the fans all threw snowballs at him. <laughs> Keep moving. And the 156 car crosses the line and they're on the mountain. So this is uh, David Kern that's going up now. Uh, it's a, a Although they don't allow uh, passengers or co-drivers anymore in the in the cars these days, but previous to this year, uh, his wife had been uh, running in the car with him. So pretty neat experience. Be driving up, you know, they're a race team together when they do the rally stuff. Uh, it's uh, the co-driver is his wife, so it's pretty cool. Hopefully he'll do a good uh, good time going up there. He's. Uh, you know, somebody that has done well here in the past, and I'm sure that he is putting everything together just as good as he can to uh, put himself in a good position in the time attack, a time attack class. No, that was, that was yeah, that was Nate Conley. He was actually a motorcycle competitor that then changed to cars and had some uh, success prior to that year that he went off, he, he was actually one of the top guys. Uh, they went on to race at the X Games and the uh, rally championship with the X Games. And, you know, he's a fabulous driver. Unfortunately, that first turn is one that comes up pretty quick. And uh, a lot of people have made that same yeah. mistake, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's caught quite a few new drivers. Yeah. One of the few fatalities on that Uh, I was racing that year. We were on motorcycles, and we were on. During that time, you, the the course was split into two, into uh, a bottom section and a top section, not split into three sections as it is now. So the motorcycles were on the top section. All the cars were on the bottom. Champions yep. later today. I want to see Ken Gushi go up. You know, this guy, he comes from a drift background, and you know, I want to see how his driving style compares to some of the other race car drivers. You know, maybe back on the up when we get into the W's and the switchbacks, you might see him whip his car around and actually go into a slide all the way around instead of doing it more of a road race style where you know all four wheels are remaining with contact with the with the uh, with the racing with surface. The road. So, and, and the braking as well is going to be cut back on a little bit by yeah he did, right. i mean he'll he'll have a turn brake in there that's you know his car is probably primarily set up as a drift car but uh you know 
I'm curious to see what it looks like on camera if he's really hanging it out or if he's driving more of a, a race line. But uh, now drifting, the more technical term for fishtailing, if you will, to our viewers at home. Some of them not. Yeah, they, they absolutely. They, they, you know, he's it's overpowering you know the the back wheels are actually spinning faster than the car is going so you're basically doing a burnout all the way through the corner and uh this looks like brianne still on the course no, i think brianne is uh up above the tree line up at this further point. all so right so this is uh one Back of our other competitors david kern on that that yeah, spoiler must, must be uh, david kern another beautiful Good. example of the topography and landscape here on pike's peak it's the deluxe day for breakthrough racing. <clears throat> He's trying to check out like a good book at a library, right? And a thanks to our sponsors, BRM Chronographies and Scion. Also, Honda, very proud sponsor of this year's race. The Ford Motor Company featuring our safety vehicles this year, the F-150 pickup, the beautiful machine adorned with that custom wrap. And Huberger is here, all part of the presentation of this year's Broadmoor Pikes Peak Hill Climb. The king of beers, Budweiser, on board to car. support. I guess this is the last of the open wheel division cars. Uh, he has the potential to put down a nice time. I mean, he has a good car, and uh, he has uh, some experience here. So I want to put it past. Uh, it's another Wells Coyote car that we were talking about earlier. So 2000, 2013 Wells Coyote uh, special. So. Dan has raced every year since 2009 and he placed fifth last year in 2013. So we're waiting for David Kern to come through Ragged Edge, which he has made his way through. Accelerating up into this right corner into a left hairpin. Dahlenbach still sitting there. I wonder how his day's going with watching all the <laughs> That's races. That's a long one, isn't it? That's a long yeah. one. I'd rather, be, I'd rather he be at the top of the hill. I actually had the opportunity right. to go out to dinner with him the other night, and uh, we work together every once in a while, but he's just such a great guy and such a, um, you know, him and his family are a major part of the hill climb here. And right. He continues to come back. Of course, he had that crash uh few years ago where he uh, went off and went into the, through the trees of the first corner oh boy and amazingly again the safety equipment that these guys have on these cars I mean he went off going 130 miles an hour straight into the trees there's nothing left of that car except the cockpit but he was fine you know he was fine well, I'll tell you what we've got some exciting action coming up when these sidecars take to the hill and then after that the four wheelers and I'll tell you what You'll have your hands on your chairs, folks, when we get there. Let's see if Ken gets sideways going around this corner or not. Ken Gushi uh, and like the 86 car is on America's Mountain. Looks like he's driving the race line there. I would have liked to see him slide around it and get going, but uh, exciting nonetheless, that's for sure. Looks like David's sponsored by Continental Tires. And, uh, you know, for sure he's going to need some grip getting up this hill. Dave Kern in the 156 car. There's the sidecars, baby. <laughs> Tell you what. Number 66. Get Wouldn't want to be a monkey on the back of that thing. Get ready for this. Watanabe Masahito-san, the pilot of this amazing machine. Ozeki-san in the sidecar seat. Uh, of course, a partnership and friendship as well. It's about racing in its finest, the sidecars, one of the more exciting divisions. And what are the risks involved with the sidecar racing, uh, given we're talking about the, the amount of rubber on the road with the cars and the four-wheelers, uh, but the sidecars present a little bit of different physical challenge in its three wheels. Yeah, for sure. I mean, those, what they call the monkey on the back, he's going to be maneuvering himself around that platform from side to side. He's going to be leaving, leaning all the way extending his body 
outside, of, outside the carriage. of the carriage. Outside of the carriage, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I actually, my brother and I, we used to always joke, you know, that we wanted to come here and win a record in each individual motorcycle division. So we had talked about the sidecar stuff, and we were like, okay, well, who's going to who's gonna ride? You know, who's going to be the monkey and who's going to drive? <laughs> so we go back and forth, and then finally we decided that if we ever do get an opportunity to do it, we're going to switch halfway through. So <laughs> as we're going, we're going to just put it on cruise control, and we're, I'm going to yeah. switch to be the monkey, and he's going to switch to be the driver. So maybe you'll see us do that one of these days. That'd be something. That would wow. be good. The, um, sounds like a dare to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a very strategic, slow entry into this first cutback into the W. Thank our technicians and again the Pikes Peak International Hill Claims Hill Hill Climb staff, the board of directors, Chairman Tom Osborne, the committee that we met with last week to develop some goals and some outlines and uh, cornerstones for our performance this weekend. But I'll tell you what, Emerging Sports TV is here bringing you these live color images around the world, and we are proud to tie you all in personally to the Broadmoor. Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, the 92nd running. We're about to see some craziness too as our four wheelers hit the ground. And I'll tell you what, that's a whole new ball game there. Mentioning the daring performance of the, of the monkey, the sidecar uh, passenger. When we get into these four wheelers, uh, based on some of the video that those of you at home have seen, you're in for some surprises. We've got a very young competitor in this division as well in the four wheelers. Uh, I believe was earlier this week in a qualifier about yeah, 16 Larry years Carnes, old. Uh, grandson, I think. Um, and they becoming even more and more popular. Tub, the four wheel um, vehicles. We're going to check out. We also heard about some exciting activity maybe with TJ Fry after he reached the finish line today. We'll maybe check up on that. We heard rumor of some very, very big surprise um, for him uh, and his, uh, I can't really say it because it would give out the surprise. Who knows? Uh, we're going to find out. But yeah, he was going to make somebody very happy up top after he crossed the finish line. We're not so happy. You don't know. <laughs> 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 Better talk to him first. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, these guys in the sidecars are getting all wound up, getting their gear on. They're uh, stretching out, and uh, you know, again, they're getting focused. They're thinking about the track, all their lines, where he's going to be hanging out the side of the carriage, and uh, and going for it. Looks like Rod Moberly. We're watching now. Yeah, for the for the sidecars to be successful, they both have to remember the track, right? And Absolutely. Know, know what they're doing. And they were looking at Dan November go up in the uh, open wheel class in the Wells Coyote Pikes Peak Special here. He's uh, headed up into the W's. Second leg of the W's. We'll be catching them back at the third leg. And it's worth mentioning that on the green flag today, we've had a, a father and son team doing the green flag, uh, Dave Jordan and his son Derek. Wow. Dave's, like many, have been up here for uh, quite a few years, and uh, generally he's the starter. He's one of the more popular guys in the whole event, huh? Yeah. <laughs> the other right. popular yeah, guy? The well, he's the second, yeah, the, that's right. <laughs> he's the, up the top. The flag is number one. <laughs> Yeah, checkered flag, I don't know who's doing it now, but for years we had a guy, the same guy doing it. His name was Art Walsh. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he, I don't know how many years he did that. It was a long time. We're watching these incredible uh, images brought to you from Top Pikes Peak. Folks, you're watching our live coverage here on, Emer on Emerging Sports TV. This year's Broadmoor Pikes Peak International Hill Climb brought to you by Mitsubishi Motors, Hankook, TCI Tire Centers, Discount Tire, the City of Colorado Springs, BRM Chronographies, excuse me, Chronographs, Scion, of course, with a couple of racing, couple of racing uh, teams in play. Ducati, of course, with that big presence on the race course. The Honda Motor Company, also a proud supporter. The King of Beers, Budweiser. 
Proud showing their support. Ford Motor Company He's providing like, our oh, safety vehicles. This out. <laughs> <laughs> That's and what I'm Hugh talking Berger. about right there. I didn't think he would do it. Yeah, you know, I mean, th this is what I was looking yeah. forward to. It's exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> I wish we could see this next corner. Hopefully we get to see these other ones uh, yeah. of him really ripping it through the corners. That was exciting. It'll be interesting to see what his time's like. Uh, yeah, he... Uh, he has that whole different driving style, you know. They, that's the driving style that used to, that's what you used to do here when it was all dirt. Right, yeah. So, one of our competitors finishing up there. It's not one that you think is fast on paper, but uh, watch, let's see if uh, what he does here. Oh, he did not pretty much, much a racing yeah. line there, yeah. but uh, that other uh, corner was sure, <laughs> sure exciting. Just go with Derek. Colorado. And you know what? I'm sure he meant to do it. Yeah, yeah. So we're looking right there, there's uh, the quad division, which will be coming up, of course, after the sidecars. And uh, right there with the guy with his foot on the tire, that is Mike Ells machine which is a, a very unique setup here he actually sits in sort of a different position as what the other guys are sitting in and it's more of just a a, a frame it's a one-off frame that was specifically made just for this uh, application here for this race uh, was designed and built by uh, Wilson uh, engineering so uh, it's going to be exciting stuff coming up it's uh, again as we look towards pit row and the access up to the starting line we're going to take a short break and the day's not over folks we'll be crowning our champions later we'll be up next with a special guest here at our emerging sports tv studios you're watching live coverage on emerging sports tv of the broadmoor pikes peak international hill climb we'll be right back after these messages There's a new beauty in town, the 2014 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. Lease an Outlander Sport now for $179 a month. Somewhere beyond five stars and five diamonds lies a place you've never been before. A place where the mountains are closer and the sky goes on forever. A place where the past shines like new and the old rules just don't apply. Welcome to the Broadmoor in Colorado. More than a resort, it is the new gateway to the American West. Discover it now at Broadmoor.com. Be one with it, and it will be one with you. Be one with your tires, and the road will be one with you. And good tires. We all have someone we love counting on us to arrive. So why count on anything less? The 2014 Mitsubishi Outlander. Named one of America's safest CUVs. Lease a 2014 Mitsubishi Outlander for $209 a month for 36 months. And welcome back to our studios here on America's Mountain, where we're broadcasting live on Emerging Sports TV, the 2014 Broadmoor Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, where we now have special guest, 
Miss Colorado 2014, Stacy Cook. Stacy, congratulations and welcome to the show. Thank you so much, John. Thanks for having me. You've been busy. It's only been a few days since you've been awarded the title. Uh, how did that feel? Um, it was a surreal experience. I've competed for four years, so when it finally happened last Saturday night, um, I was on cloud nine, needless to say. Got to be happy that uh, you knew you were coming to the race, uh, maybe as a fan, but you didn't know you'd be coming as Miss Colorado. What a surprise. I didn't. It was a huge surprise. <laughs> I'm really, really happy to be here. What's your favorite thing about racing for you, Stacy? Uh, for me, being here, this is a one-of-a-kind venue to have the race on the side of a mountain. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's really wonderful to be a part of and to see all the racers out here today. Not easy to be miss anything, if you ask me, but uh, to, 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 to reach victory, if you want to call it that, what was your, what did you do for talent? Tell me, because I'm really curious about all that. My talent is Tahitian dance, uh, which is kind of like hula dancing, but faster. Not something I'm sure people in the racing world would be familiar with. We have plenty of room here in the studio, if you care to give us an example oh, before sure. we're Maybe gone. Later. But uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's uh, very unique, would you yes. say? And uh, did you already have a, like another competitor, if you will? I don't want to call you a competitor, but do you have another young lady that you were concerned about, maybe, with um, the, in that no, area? No, you know, it really is an honor to represent the girls that I competed with. Um, so we always have this cheesy quote that, uh, we're not picking a winner from the representatives or picking a representative from the winner. So nice. I'm just happy to represent them because uh, nice. they're all wonderful girls. Well, uh, you know, it's an honor to have you here. Uh, you've, you've got a lot of folks on their toes right now. No, you kind of have a crowd following <laughs> you. Uh, you got a favorite racer, a favorite team here today? I just met Bobby. Sweet. Yes. That's cool. <laughs> I'm not huge into racing, uh -huh. so um, but meeting him was very cool as he's the youngest racer to ever race this uh, trail. Or very cool. Track the before. race course, yeah, yes, no doubt. Um, you know, uh, we're going to see you later on today. Now you have a yes. very special position that you'll be fulfilling later today. I know uh, there'll be a few people very happy to see you. What are you yes. going to be doing? Later today, I'm going to be handing out the awards to all of the winners in all 16 different classes. Wow. So I'm really excited about the that. The hoist. Yes. You know, sometimes uh, they're waiting 11 months and uh, three weeks, four days to feel that feeling. Yeah. How long have you waited to, did you know that you'd be in the, uh, you know, in the running for Miss Colorado? Did you really, did you have to sacrifice something to I, start that? I did have to sacrifice a lot. It was a lot of work, so I can definitely relate to how they're feeling right now. You know, we're on America's Mountain. Is there somebody or someone you'd like to say hi to? Because uh, a lot of your fans and family did not know you'd be in the seat you're in right now. Right, they we're, didn't. It's my, still fresh. It is, and my dad is a huge car fan. Uh, he loves Porsches and all kinds of stuff. So hi, Dad, and uh, hope you're enjoying the race. You know, you could probably tell us some of the better aspects of Colorado, the state itself. I mean, there's so many things to do to see yes. the people uh, actually have a reputation all their own of being helpful, friendly, kind, yeah. considerate. Absolutely. How about uh, a few of the favorite attractions people would enjoy here in Colorado? Well, I love that we have all the 14ers all around Colorado. I think that that's a great thing. It goes right along with us being the fittest state in the nation. Yeah. So I think that that's wonderful. Um, I love yeah. Elitch Gardens, um, all the things that kind of make Colorado, yeah. Colorado, and definitely Sweet. the outdoors aspect, though, is my favorite. Now, uh, your journey is yet, is, but just begun. Now, yes. uh, after this, the Miss Colorado Championship and contest, doesn't it go to Miss America from there? Yes. Yeah, and I then, go to Miss America. September 14th is the final night. Sweet! In Atlantic City, yeah. And possibly, uh, so we're looking forward to going past that? Is there a uh, The Miss America organization only has Miss America. Is it? So, yes. I can Which see you. Which is a huge you. honor in itself. So. I can see you atop the pedestal. <laughs> Thank you. Stacy, it's such a pleasure. How about um, if there's one thing you'd like to remind people out there that haven't been to Pikes Peak yet, what's mm -hmm. there one thing you'd like them to know once you set foot here in the area to be prepared for? 